first is Crystal Palace against Manchester City. Let's check on the two teams. Crystal Palace field the side that beat Blackburn last Saturday. Between times, they themselves were beaten at Leeds. It's a reminder on the day that they need a victory, that Palace look harder than ever in the direction of their twin strikers, Mark Bright and Ian Wright, who've already obliged them with 49 goals between them this season. Manchester City make a change in goal. Eric Nixon returns after a loan period at Tranmere. He was sent off when these two teams met at Main Road in December. Winger David White gets another run at right back. Striker Imre Varadi is missing through injury, but Palace know that they've got to put an effective shadow on City's much-talked-about young striker Paul Stewart. He's got 28 goals this season. Our referee today is John Key of Rotherham. Well, it's a bright day, a big crowd at Selhurst Park on a day when big deeds are waiting to be done. Manchester City get this important afternoon underway in light blue shirts, attacking the goal to our right, an afternoon when Palace have to apply themselves to getting a victory because nothing else will do. Just to remind you, if Palace win and elsewhere in South London, Millwall beat or draw with Blackburn Rovers, then Palace go into the playoffs at the top of the second division for a place in the first. If Palace do not win today, well, their chance will have gone. What a fabulous way to finish the season. who was a Manchester City player suckling until January. He was transferred here to South London. Right here, 23 goals for Palace this season. Oh, great skill. Red Fenn again with it. are up from the back again, it's a better looking one, it's one behind off Andrew Hinchcliffe for another corner. Jim Cannon up again. Uh, has a great reputation for getting up and scoring with good headers from this sort of situation. In the meantime, it's Redfern. to make tracks to the penalty area. But I think that's maybe where we can see the anxiety that's showing at the moment in the Palace side. And Eric Nixon so far really hasn't been troubled. seen from Crystal Palace who've looked a little anxious in this opening quarter of an hour. Ian Wright is clear and Nixon making a good grab. What a battle uh, Stewart and Nebling are having and uh, Stewart won that part of it. Morley now finding Beckford. Ooh, nice little run there and a good pass for McNabb. Comes to David White. Thundering a shot there and a good piece of goalkeeping. That was just awkwardly in front of uh, Perry Suckling. It was hit well there by White. Cannon backpedaling, under pressure from Molden. Something gets it again. What a hero he was last week against Blackburn, saving Steve Archibald's penalty with only 10 minutes of the game gone. A turning point, that really. Good jump there by Wright. 
Redfern to Finnegan. Lights up again, and here he is feeding Redfern. Barber, what a space. Where are the Manchester City players? Redfern, where are the City players? Just behind. There was a chance there for Palace, and suddenly the City defenders seem to have gone to sleep. Nobody around Phil Barber. He had all the time in the world. There goes his cross. And even the challenge here on Redfern was, well, you could say inept. Heading to the side of him. Great chance of Palace. Stewart climbing over him and a free kick to Manchester City. Neil McNabb will take it. And with London connections, of course, had a spell with Tottenham. And down on the south coast with them. It's McNabb with the free kick. Stewart had peeled her off to the far side. Gets Hinchcliffe in. This could be a problem for Crystal Palace. And that shot is high and wide, and it's a goal kick. And the inquest between Finnegan and Cannon, also involving Dublin. are creating so little at the moment. We've beaten the offside trap once, which saw Ian Wright get in. Some snack marking in the City defence gave them another half chance. But not much has come apart from that. Goes Barber, beaten in the air. Stops it. He finds Seagraves. Pinch lift again for Manchester City and Stewart well offside. We're well into time added on. And the free kick not being taken from the right spot, so 
John Key insists it goes back four or five yards. And Jim Cannon will take it. Finnegan. Any farther. And White is caught offside again. Meantime, Penny Farther down injured and will need some treatment. Maybe a wait till the interval, which is just a matter of seconds away now. Hinchcliffe with the free kick. Well, the first half where Palace really haven't conquered their nerves, it's as simple as that. They've made few chances and City have been quite comfortable in defence apart from the odd couple of occasions and not unnaturally we come to a half-time scoreline that is Crystal Palace nil, Manchester City nil. So Palace in the red and blue stripes get the second half underway attacking the goals to our right on an afternoon when they must win and hope that Millwall can do them a favour elsewhere in South London against Blackburn Rovers if Palace are to reach the second division promotion playoffs. Nil nil. Jim Cannon. Oh, and he's got the ball through to right, but right very quickly. And for a moment it looked as though the big defender had opened up the way for Palace to find a way through. Having going there and a free kick to Crystal Palace. desperate need of a goal as Finnegan plays this one in and there seemed to be a slowness about the uh, Manchester City defence and Penny Farther very nearly forced his way through and it was inevitable before the game was over that Steve Coffer will be down a bit nearer the action Time to see Paul Stewart make this break. Bad. Now Finnegan. Go on. Finnegan hoisting one towards Mark Bright. Ian Wright as lively as ever trying to make something of it. It comes through to Pennyfather. He slipped it wide towards Barber, but Beckford might well get in there first. Oh, but Barber fought back well. <laughs> Same to be said for Beckford, but it's Palace's throw. Nebling's making a late run. The question is whether City will be able to pick him up or not. But it comes through to Bright. And then for Wright. Cannon with the header. Seagraves eye on the ball. Makes his clearance. <laughs> the line from Liverpool. Not brutal actually. Right. Oh, that was a foul on the right by Seagraves. Free kick to Crystal Palace. Need 
something to go their way to soothe their anxiety. Let's see if Redfern can find something on Thomas now. Onto the left foot! Hit straight at the keeper, hit with great power. Nixon couldn't hold it, but he grabbed it before Wright or Bright could get in to uh, finish it off. He struck that beautifully with the left foot. And Nixon couldn't hold it. again, Barber. City out. Bright's header. Reaction saved by Nixon. Barber being forced back. Eventually gets it through to Suckling. Oh, the back pass by Redman is away off the target and provides with the corner. Halfway through the second half as Redfern takes this corner for Crystal Palace. Wright tried to get up there but couldn't get a touch. It comes through to David uh, Burke. Warney's he's found Wright with a good ball, slipped in by him and knocked away. Crystal Palace we saw last week against the Blackburn Rovers. Slick and skillful and certainly in those forward areas quite dangerous but we haven't seen very much of that today. There's another throw which Burke will take for them. All right. Played into Bright. Oh, over the top from what? Three yards? another great chance the best probably that Palace have had this afternoon incredible to think that the man who's been on target 26 times this season came off his knee by the look of it and over the top in fairness to him it was probably a bobble there that just beat him at the end Palace. Burke with it. 
Nebling's header. Goal given. The referee's given the goal. City will claim that it didn't cross the line, but Nebling's header counts, and Palace gets an opening goal. Oh, this will be uh, worth looking at. Pushing it onto the post. But does it actually cross the line? Well, it's difficult to say from there because the ball was in the air when Nixon clutched it back. But if it did cross the line, it was a real fractional decision. But Palace aren't arguing about that. To Gavin Nebeling's goal puts them 1 0 into the lead. Scott's coming on, and they're going to take Robbie Brightwell. He said Robbie, Br Ian Brightwell, the son of Robbie Brightwell, of course, the uh, famous Olympic athlete. And on comes Ian Scott, midfielder. Well, there's a great buzz around the ground. Of course, everybody's got transistors to their ears, and they're jumping up and down in the stand on the far side now. Obviously, whatever the news is that it's come from uh, Millwall, they consider it to be fairly good news. It's with Bright, it's with Penny Father, and it might go in yet. Thomas trying to get a final touch on it. And Thomas! It's another one for Palace, 2 0. No doubt about that one. And for the second week running, Jeff Thomas gets a header in that goal there. The second one against Blackburn last week, the second one against Manchester City this week, and who knows what this might hold for Crystal Palace. Mark Bright with a nice little big cross there. They couldn't force it home that way, Nixon just put it out. And in the end, it goes up in the air. Up in the back of the net with a header there from Jeff Thomas. So 2-0 to Paris. Well, he had a terrific game last week against Blackburn. He's a real action man from the midfield, and he got his reward again today. And now Palace are really on the move. Right to Penny Father. Barber. any doubt at all about whether the first one had crossed the line, there was none about the second. And Palace leading by two goals to nil. Thomas, this time right, is onside. This is throw. away that time by Eric Nixon as Ian Scott Redmond Finnegan now a bit of space ahead of him for Ian Wright can he make the most of it though 
little touch through there, trying to get Redford on his way, and in the end, it almost came to him. Well, behind uh, Perry Suckland's goal, there must be two or three hundred youngsters waiting to come running onto the field. I'm sure Palace could well do without that. Nab. them as Palace lead here by two goals to nil and the referee has decided I think what he's going to do he's going to wait until the throw is about to be taken and everybody's on that side of the field blow the whistle and disappear down the tunnel he hasn't done it yes that's exactly what he's done the ball has been taken by a fan the players have gone scurrying off to the dressing rooms as best they can and the stewards have an impossible job. Certainly, Crystal Palace have played their part by beating Manchester City here by two goals to nil. All they have to do now is to wait for these excited Palace fans to see what the news is from Millwall. Final score then here at Selhurst Park is Crystal Palace 2, Manchester City 0.